Pat and Tammy McLeod's 16-year-old son, Zach, suffered severe brain damage after collapsing on the football field in 2008. Life was never the same. His parents are here to talk about ambiguous loss. But before we get to that, by the way, you've written an excellent book. It's called Hit Hard, or you can go to 100Huntley.com and hear the rest of their story. But Pat, tell me just briefly what happened to Zach in Boston uh, back over a decade ago. Yeah, so as you said, he, he collapsed on the football field. When we got to the hospital, a doctor told us that they were going to have to open up his skull cap, take out a blood clot, that the result of that surgery could be anything from him dying to him having a complete recovery or anything in between. Well, he didn't do either of the other extremes. It was something in between. And in a sense, you lost Zach as a result of this because he's not the same young man that he was you know, at the time the injury happened to what he is today. That's right, yeah, he's, you know, there's still a, you know, a part of him that is just like he was as, as a young man. Uh, but yeah, a lot, there's a lot of him that we don't see expressed the way that we once did. Well, he loved life and he loved Jesus. Yeah. And he loved people and he still does that today. Yeah. One of the things as I was reading your book, and it's very riveting, you guys are so honest, even the struggles you had in your marriage, but as I got towards the end of the book, and you know, I'm seeing this wonderful couple that have done so many amazing things together, raising these four kids, and now you're in a situation where you're looking at Zach's injury one way, Pat is looking at it another way, and you come across something called ambiguous loss. Yes, I was reading grief books, and they were not helping. Mm -hmm. There's no closure in ambiguous loss. So I was... Finally, thinking where could I find help in learning about something that is not in these books and got to Pauline Boss through the rehab hospital. They said, check out her articles and books. And I read them and I thought, oh, someone finally understands me. It's amazing. And that was a key for you, even relating to your husband. Yes. So... Ambiguous loss, there are two types. The first type is when you don't have the body, but psychologically the person's with you. So soldiers missing in war, kidnapped kids, um, natural disasters. The other type is when you have the person, but you don't have them the same way. Mm. They emotionally or psychologically, cognitively aren't the same. So that would be like dementia, Alzheimer's, traumatic brain injury, addiction, mental illness. So there's so much ambiguous loss and that was new for me and super helpful to know there's a term, I, this has a name. Well, I like a quote here from Pauline Boss, the secret to living well with ambiguous loss requires living well with both having and not having someone the way they once had them. How was that for you, Pat, in understanding maybe that your wife was not seeing the same things as you were? Yeah, I think that's really the story of ambiguous loss is that, first of all, it's, it's difficult personally to do, to do both of those. To, people will typically do one or the other or neither. That, you know, and uh, in our case, I was very much focused on the Zach that we still had and probably living in so, some bit of denial about the Zach that we had lost. Tammy was at the other one at, uh, doing just the opposite. And that's really sort of the tension that gets created yeah. in our lives and in the story hit hard and seeing how that unfolds. You've been followers of Jesus for a long time. Were you praying for a miracle uh, or, or where are you even at today when it comes to Zach's situation? Yeah. I was yeah. praying for a miracle. I would put my hands on all the parts of his body that didn't work and say, God, please heal. But Zach wasn't agreeing with me in the prayer. So he can't talk, but he can say, mm. when I would pray for his healing, he wouldn't make any noise. When I would pray for God's glory, no matter what, he would say, mm, mm. Mm. So it was interesting that he wasn't agreeing with me in the prayer. So I started praying for his healing less because of Zach's response, actually. Okay. And so the tension you guys are having in your marriage, uh, were you seeing him then as, as being in denial that, uh, or that he wasn't 
seeing, you know, maybe grieving the way he should? And how did you feel? Yes, definitely. I thought he was in denial, but learned through the process that we need to be gentle with each other and respect the other person's way of dealing with it. So once I heard the term ambiguous loss and realized that people could go one way or the other with having or not having, it helped me understand him better and be more patient. So once you understood about this ambiguous loss, mm -hmm. because Zach didn't pass away, if he had have died, you know, around that time, you know, back in 2008, you'd have gone through the grief process, but Zach is still there. And I know you wanted him still there. You wanted him back the way he was, but you're trying to kind of, you know, feel through this thing. How has it impacted your faith? Has it caused you to be stronger in your faith or the, God, why did this happen to my dear son who loved you and wanted to do amazing things? I mean, he's doing amazing things, but maybe not in the way that you would understand. Yeah, I will say that in my life, there have been probably four moments that are just unbelievably uh, formative in my life and where I felt like I actually experienced a, a real deep connection to God. Three of those have come since Zach's injury and they were all uh, moments of sort of meeting a God that I had not really met in, in this way before, uh, meeting a crucified God, mm. a God who understands suffering, uh, and a, a God who sort of stepped into that in order to save us from it. And so, yeah, for me, there have been just deep moments of connection, not, and, and a lot of it has come in the presence, too, of Zach. So, so in your, as you've understood that this has certainly helped you communicate better, uh, bring some healing even in your marriage for that time, but how about Chelsea, Soren, and Nate? Those are your three other children. Have they been under, because they've lost, you know, Chelsea lost her best friend. They were close. The two other boys, they've lost their brother. How have they been able to understand the loss and he's just not the same and how have they dealt with it? I wish I could speak for them, but I actually don't know because a lot of their processing was them with their friends, mm. not so much them processing with us. So I actually don't know how they're doing with the loss. I know that it was hard on them, but I don't know the process they Greg, went through. If I could add to that, yeah. <clears throat> I think a lot of the reason why I wanted to write this book was for, their, for them. You know, I think it's been devastating. I actually think that uh, our, my goal was to capture certain of these stories that I was just talking about, of my own sort of journey through this, of how God met us in the midst of it, so that when they were ready, they would have something to look at and see how, how it was that their parents actually grew deeper in their faith through this loss. You guys did something absolutely amazing. It, it again, I teared up when I was reading it, but you had a time where you, you brought your friends together to celebrate Zach's life up until the injury. And then later that day was Zach then there you were celebrating his life as it is now going forward. Tell me about that. Pauline Boss in her literature talks about having ceremonies because usually for funerals, for example, that acknowledges the death, but in ambiguous loss, there's no validation of the loss. So families are left to fend for themselves. So when she said have a ceremony, I wanted to, but she didn't say how to do it. So we just had to create it ourselves. So the first one was without Zach and we brought our friends together and each of our family members spoke about what we missed about Zach. And then we had people write on blue cards what they missed about him and gave him a chance to share that. And we used the arts um, video and his fa Zach's favorite songs. But then the second ceremony was actually a birthday party. So we wanted to show visibly holding the having and the not having together. So we did the not having ceremony without Zach, and then we did that we have him and he's amazing. So we had people write on gold cards, things they love about Zach, wow. and then they got up and talked about it. And he was screaming and hugging everyone. <laughs> <laughs> was, yeah, go ahead. No, no, nothing, it was a special moment. Yeah. Was it healing for you? You know, 
it was not only healing for me, it was healing for everyone. Like uh, Tammy, some people were kind of like, like, what are you doing and why are you doing this? And yet those were the, the people who were coming up afterwards to Tammy saying, thank you for, as far as the ceremony of remembrance, uh, thanks for doing this. I, I needed this more than I thought I did. What a wonderful thing. Well, thank you guys again uh, for being here. Uh, the name of the book is Hit Hard, uh, journeying through a, a young man suffering a severe injury while playing football. His life was changed. His family's life was changed. But there's healing in the middle of all that. And I really encourage you to get this book. And I'd also encourage you, if you're going through an ambiguous loss, maybe you do have somebody that you love that uh, had a good friend with ALS and he could no longer use his body at the end. He was a different person but he was still a wonderful person. And, and you know, you go through the loss of that person. There is a, a measure of grief. So we just want you to know that there are people you can talk to. Call our prayer lines, 1-866-273-4444.